Hello and welcome back to No BS. Today we turn to talking about one of the biggest video game companies in the world. I'm of course talking about EA or Electronic Arts. They've been around for many decades now and become one of the biggest names in video gaming. Love them or hate them that way too because while they used to produce quality games and they do still own a number of big franchises, they've certainly gone downhill recently. They've turned into kind of a money-grubbing company who just re-releases games without many updates. They do these yearly releases of sports games and other things. They also add in lots of microtransactions trying to get you to buy more things, buy DLC, buy skins, buy drop boxes, stuff like that. EA has also ruined the Star Wars video gaming world. They've been owning those rights for a while. All they've come out with was a few good ones recently, but a lot of it's just been Battlefront, online gaming, nothing cool, nothing like they used to be. So EA has had a troubled mixed history. And today I think they might've jumped the shark. Today they've announced that they're going to be teaming up with a bad group to enforce social justice in gaming, whatever that means. I'm not really sure. I'm going to have to go over this article and get more details. It says Discourse EA teams up with the ADL to enforce social justice in gaming. Now, we know that group that they're teaming up with is very biased. They're very much a left-wing front designed to kind of slander and slam conservative groups, calling people racist and stuff like that. Not really the kind of noble, charitable cause that they claim. I don't know if EA is been fooled by them or they're not in the know of their kind of biased, terrible platform. But that's what's going on here. EA is teaming up with this terrible group and they're going to enforce social justice, which seems like it's something from 2016. I feel like I'm going back in time. I felt like social justice and SJWs and the warriors behind that have been kind of fading. The terms have certainly been fading, but this is happening. This is a new thing, I believe. I don't see a date on it. This says April 2020 on this tweet. I don't know if that's from a long long time ago or what it's definitely from this year and i don't know what they mean by social justice i mean it's just it seems really strange to me it seems like something that they're going to do that's going to make it more biased more pro women pro minority anti male anti white people of course as part of it and it's not really the kind of noble cause that they claim so let's go ahead and read on and see where this goes the games industry is being pushed by germany and ea in a direction that if successful would mean the mass deplatforming of right wing and free speech and gaming. The Anti-Defamation League and the big names in Silicon Valley have already signed on to similar projects in the U.S., all of which, if successful, will mean the inevitable control of gaining by the woke. It starts with Germany. Martin Lorber, EA Public Relations Director for German-speaking countries, announced in April a dual project between itself, the German government, and two organizations, Good Gaming, Well Played Democracy, and Kino Pixel Den Fashion, No Pixels for Fascists. Their stated goal is to make sure gamers do not become radical However, when the smallest bits of digging reveals that this project is in truth nothing more than a full-throated attempt to force the games industry and social media platforms to bow down before social justice. So it's just another form of control. It's another way to kind of make people think and believe what you want. This isn't a surprise completely. It is very disappointing. It sucks to see such a major game in a other country kind of trying to meddle and just ruin our fun. This is a popular thing. They know that gaming is one of the biggest industries in the world. Gaming makes more money than TV, movies, and music combined. It's a huge market and that's why we constantly see social justice warriors trying to invade it, trying to take it over, trying to tell us what to do. They love to go to popular spaces and take over and boss you around and say, hey, you can't say this, you can't do this, you can't make a game about this. It's just about control. It's about them trying to control the narratives. They think they have a right because oh, they go around, they call everyone racist, they say right-wingers are these facts fascist, and that gives them the right to do and take over and do whatever they want. But it's not true. Conservatives aren't bad people. They try to act like we're all these offensive 1940s Germans, which is funny because this is coming from modern Germans who are actual descendants from those World War II villains. But now they're trying to act like conservatives in America are, like other conservative people, people that like Trump, people that like freedom, democracy, Second Amendment, things like that. We're supposed to be these bad people now, but it's just not true. The two organizations joining this collab collaboration contains some of the most radical activists for social justice inside of Germany. The organization behind Good Gaming are the Amado Antonio Foundation, a left-wing activist group headed by former frequent Stasi informant Annette Kahane. Kahane Foundation got in trouble last year when a brochure sent to German schools suggested you could recognize a girl's family as far-right if a girl wears dresses and does chores. Wow. So these are not the friendly neutral groups. They call themselves these kind of honorable names. Anti-defamation. Sounds like you're anti- 
defamation. I mean, it sounds like a noble cause, just like how social justice and justice might sound like a good thing, or feminism and supporting women is based on a good thing, but they've perverted it. They've turned it into this anti-conservative, anti-far right, as they call it, far right, like that's the bad thing. They're just saying anyone that doesn't conform to woke stuff, who isn't all about alphabets, minorities, all about free socialism and stuff like that, if you're not into that, you're far right and you're evil. And that's the real background for these companies. That's why they go after girls who wear dresses and do chores. I mean, how insane is that? Good Gaming writes, its job is to analyze how right-wing alternative actors are increasingly trying to foment a misanthropic atmosphere on gaming platforms. They have a problem with right-wingers enjoying space on Steam, for example. Social media posts show their plan is a propaganda war. They want to educate young people to recognize hate online and push back against right-wing ideas. So that's where this tweet comes from. It's from just a few months ago. It says, Translations Part 1, Gaming Culture Projects to Strengthen Digital Civil Society is transparently announcing EA support for projects intended to profile gamers for right-wing sentiments and turn them into ideologues and activists. So it appears there's a straight-up targeting of conservatives. If you're right-wing, if you're on the right at all, if you don't go along with every single woke thing they can think of, you're an enemy to them. It's If you're not with us, you're against this kind of mentality. And it's really extremist, it's really collectivist, and it's really anti-free speech. I mean, we're not going around trying to say Democrats can't go on the internet. I'm not here saying and making videos trying to pretend, oh, a liberal can't play a video game that I like. I don't want to see liberals playing Call of Duty when I'm playing online. It's insane. That's not how it works. It only goes one way. The ones that are censorous and the ones that are big brother-like and trying to control things are the liberals. They hate, 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 hate conservatives so much that they won't even let us play video games. I mean, it's insane. That's their idea of social justice is to not let conservatives play video games. That is really the kind of the point to take home today. No Pixels for Fascists is a far left grassroots anti-fascist organization made up of websites, media figures, news orgs, research groups, and game studios. Their stated goals include educating organizations and people about how gamers get radicalized and becoming far right and how the right wing used internet space according to their documents. This includes teaching organizations and individuals how to identify right wing mindsets alone by looking at online social media platforms. So this is a very weird and perverted way to kind of get people onto their side, to keep people onto their side. Their kind of tactic is to have full control over all the information and to pretend anyone that's conservative leaning is far right and that's evil. And they act like, oh, if you become conservative, if you become more right wing or Republican, that's an evil move. But just imagine if this was said in the reverse. Imagine if we were making an organization that was trying to so-called de-radicalize far left wingers. Now, far left wingers actually have histories of violence and doing bad things. Speaking of this anti-fascist stuff, Antifa has been terrorizing our country for months. They've been causing these riots, destroying property, attacking people. Even in many instances, many have died, like 50 people died this summer. But meanwhile, right wing, far right, whatever they want to call it, they make up this whole supremacist conspiracy. It's basically non-existent. I don't see any of them out there. I don't see prominent figures online making speeches. Nothing like that is going on. There's no deaths. There's no rallies gone wrong, protests, different uh, riots and stuff like that. It just doesn't happen on the right. And that's why we're more about, we're putting out good ideas. We have great plans. We have strong families and leaders and plans for our countries and our areas and our cities and states. But the liberals, they don't do that. They don't actually have a plan. They don't actually have plans that they present, at least. I mean, we know what they'll probably do. They talk about moving towards socialism and getting rid of cars and planes and cow farts and stuff like that. They have some weird plans, but it's not really the forefront of their strategy. They're more interested in deplatforming their opposition. They're more interested in censoring people that disagree with them. They call them far right or alt right or whichever they call them the N word, like the 1940s Germans from World War II. They call you lots of names and then they pretend getting indoctrinated into the right is some kind of crazy evil thing when really it could be something as simple as a person agreeing with Trump, watching one of his speeches or reading an article and agreeing with Trump's stances and then voting for him. That's all we're talking about. We're talking about a simple vote, a simple person maybe taking a conservative stance on an issue like say immigration, wanting to limit that or supporting a second amendment or first amendment, which are key staples among some of the key staples in the conservative platforms under Trump. And that's really it. I mean, you got to really spell it out to realize how ridiculous 
ridiculous this is. They're against anyone that might think about voting for Trump. That's what they'll end up calling far right, extreme, evil, dictator, villain. They they go so far, but it's just based on their rhetoric and their nonsense. No Pixels co-founders are Pascal Wagner, a left-wing German journalist, and Ariella Brandenburg, a lefty historian and blogger. Their organization harbors a deep hatred for gamers and is a proponent of the game's right-wing radicalization myth. According to Brandenburg, gamers are actively anti-diversity and right-wing. They are full of toxic nerd masculinity in their treehouse as they actively fight to make sure nobody except cis white males can play video games. Absolutely insane. Absolutely untrue. And I think this is another example of just liberals when they find someone that doesn't agree with them on every level, on every single woke term like alphabet people, trans rights, every single little thing. You have to be about feminism and you have to girl wash your movies and remove white characters from games. You have to go along with every single principle. And if not, if you step out, if you're not perfectly in line, they'll call you a racist, white supremacist. They'll call you a far right extremist and they'll act like the game is indoctrinating you into this right wing anti-diversity nonsense when really people can be anti-diversity. They could be against diversity for many reasons. We talk about that here. It's not because we're racist. It's because we're sick of the propaganda getting shoved down our throats. We're sick of our games being politicized and taken to these extreme levels. We just want to have fun. We just want to enjoy stuff and enjoy the real kind of escape that games are supposed to give us. And I think with that said, that wraps things up. You could see what's going on here. You could see the players behind this social justice push that's being championed by EA and some of its cohorts. And I think it's a really bad sign and hopefully it'll stop. That about wraps things up. Hope you guys enjoyed today's video. Make sure you comment your thoughts on everything below. Hit the like button if you enjoyed what you saw. Subscribe if you're new and we'll see you on the next video.